All right, everybody, welcome. We are at our uh, Cinema Wasteland Report, convention report. Um, actually, though, we are um, in a Walmart parking lot for this report. Um, I actually got recommended this, this idea by a, a friend of mine whose opinion I value deeply. Um, really cool guy, very respectful, uh, well-educated guy, well-spoken. Um, I mean well-spoken, I mean like Henry Thoreau well-spoken. Uh, cool guy, but yeah, he suggested uh, instead of going to Wasteland, which I've been doing for years, why not this time out uh, come hang out in a Walmart parking lot? At first, I was of course skeptical, but uh, I definitely consider myself a don't knock it to try it kind of guy. So I figured give it a shot, save me some gas money, and uh, I'm gonna do that right now. I've got some friends coming, I got some beer, so we're gonna hang out here in the Walmart parking lot. All right, guys, uh, I gotta say, I'm starting to think that maybe he was uh, just fucking with me a little bit. Um, I mean, it's fine, but not as good as Wasteland. Um, I mean, I kind of miss the being shoulder to shoulder with uh, people who refuse to wear deodorant, and there's no chick crushing cans with a vagina. Um, although, seeing some of the people that come in and out of here, I think there's still hope for uh, the rest of the day. Um, but yeah, anyway, make the best of it. There's always next year for Wasteland. Um, but I'm actually going to go in now and buy something, even though I've spent tons of money in, in, at Walmart in the past, many, many dollars and a lot of support. It'd be kind of lame if I came here and just hung out in the parking lot with friends and didn't actually go in and buy anything. So that would make me a douchebag. I don't want to be one of those. So I'm going to go see what they got inside and... Uh, it's my Walmart Wasteland Report. Welcome back to the ball, my horror friends. I'm the Headbanger. I hate to start off the this episode with kind of like a basically a, an inside joke, uh, for lack of a better phrase. But um, those you, those of you who don't follow me on Facebook, uh, basically in October last month, um, I was going to attend Cinema Wasteland. If you watch Horrors Ball regularly, you will know I'm a big supporter of horror conventions, uh, particularly Cinema Wasteland, which is held twice a year. Uh, I was planning to go there as usual, and uh, let's just say something transpired on um, the great Facebook. Um, I don't want to get into it again because it's really not even worth spending this much time on it. But uh, let's just say it always seems like mouth runners are always the most confident while they're behind a computer screen or behind a keyboard. Definitely seems to be the case. And uh, yeah, it's just an unfortunate situation. Um, but it, it, anytime you're, anytime you're dealing with ignorance, it's just it's just pointless. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like to rationalize ignorance or idiot, idiocy is just completely pointless. It's like trying to have a a civilized debate with a a racist or a bigot. It's just it's pointless, and it's it's um, you know, it's like talking to the, you get more out of a brick wall, more IQ out of, out of a brick wall. So. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but that was basically a situation, an unfortunate situation of uh, someone surprisingly running their mouth to somebody who probably the least deserving person to get uh, to get treated that way, but whatever. People got to remember, the headbanger is, and Horace Ball, is always That's a fact. So uh, I already spent way too much time on that. It's an unfortunate situation, but whatever. It is what it is, and uh, that's it. Uh, something cool happened last month. I mentioned in a previous episode. 
Also, if you go back, if you missed the Halloween episode, I know a few, pe few people PM me saying, you know, they, they missed it, they didn't know it was upload or whatever. I just, I didn't intend to put that Halloween special up as late as I did. It was like the middle of Halloween evening or whatever. Basically something happened with the computer and uh, took longer than I thought. But if you missed the Halloween special, not too late to catch it. Go back. It's epic, of course, as usual, as always. Um, but I mentioned one thing, how I had something cool going on in October, one of the many things. But uh, I was able to host a horror screening night at an awesome venue called the Funeral Home around here. And uh, it really is a, pre it was previously a funeral home, literally. And uh, the guy who owns it, he lives upstairs and basically the whole funeral home is dedicated essentially to art and, and the fact of having bands play. My band has played there. So the, the building itself, even though it's old and kind of grimy, it's got that cool like punk metal type atmosphere. And uh, I was able to host a movie night on Hollow's Eve, which was awesome. And I showed Stage Fright and Falchi Zombie. And the cool thing I just want to show you, I have a little bit of footage, not too much, just to give you guys a little bit of indication of what, what went down. It's just awesome. The main room had rows of couches lined up and uh, the stage where the bands would play um, was there. And on the back of the stage, covering the whole wall was his uh, his screen um, and he used a projector. And man, it just looked it looked way better than I thought it was gonna look. Um, the vibe was awesome. I had a bunch of us there drinking some beers. He had, he had made popcorn. So thank you, Clint, if you're watching, for allowing me to host that. It was awesome. Definitely want to do it again. Maybe hoping maybe the premiere Little Headbangers film Zombie Kids when it's all done. Maybe we can have the premiere there, which would be amazing. But check out this footage. It just gets gives you a little inkling of how cool it was and how it looked. Such a cool vibe in there. It really felt like a kind of a grimy New York City uh, movie theater or something. So that was awesome. So check that out. We'll be back. Stage fright, stage and fright. Falchi Zombie here at the <laughs> funeral home. Which is a real funeral home. Well, it's formerly. formerly. Not, not actively anymore. Um, it's Hollow's Eve. 
So what a perfect way to spend watching on this awesome <laughs> screen. So, uh, it's big. And there's, you can't see couches, but there's couches. And it's big. Yeah, it was really it's cool set up here at the funeral home. And a uh, perfect way to spend Hallow's yeah, Eve it was amazing. with friends oh, here at the, the funeral home. And Great atmosphere. This is Jared. Oh. From the so, I am one of Tom's friends. <laughs> you get to watch movies. <laughs> so, yeah, this was an amazing night. Yeah, we want to thank uh, way to spend the night exactly. the ad of former funeral home here. We want to thank uh, Clint for having us here. Yeah. Hey. The bearded Amish. Huh? Hi. <laughs> so it's an awesome night and uh, happy Halloween. And there's the cat, the fucking cat. <laughs> Spooky. Spooky. Hey, <laughs> you're a star. You're the star of the show. It wasn't for a while. <laughs> 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 that was awesome. <laughs> Trying to make sure she didn't poop in there. <laughs> the the just ran into the poop. I'm going stage for Anna Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah, it's, it's tough to tell, you know, with the, the camera, the quality, but this was like, the film was, you know, it was on a really, basically a whole wall, so it really felt like an actual movie theater. It was just awesome seeing two classic films, Italian horror films like that, on Hallow's Eve, it was with friends, and it was just awesome. So, uh, kind of a shorter show today, which may be a relief for some of you, uh, most of you I assume not. You're like, no, Headbanger, we love your hour-long shows, but uh, a little shorter because I got a lot going on. Um, for those of you who know me, I work retail, so it's a horrible time of the year. I'm going to be really busy coming up. So this will be the last episode before the big season finale, in case you missed it earlier. Horrors Ball documentary, Behind the Horrors Ball. Um, that'll be the season finale this year. Probably air right around Christmas. Uh, so check that out. So this is the final regular episode before that. Um, so I have a segment coming up next. This will be the final Just Fucking Buy It segment, which was one of the winners in the contest. Um... So this is a, we actually shot this back on when we had our um, the season premiere of this season, the Golden Horn Awards. We had shot this segment that day um, during the after party. So yeah, keep in mind we've had uh, several drinks while doing this, but uh, at the time we shot it, we didn't know what the review would be for. So it's perfect for this segment because it is a just fucking buy a movie. Um, if you've seen it or not, check out this review. Got to have this film in your collection. Um, so enjoy this review, and then we'll come back. I'll have the final mailbag of the season showing you something cool that I've gotten recently. And uh, that'll be it for this episode. So check out this segment of Just Fucking Buy. Awesome film. All right, everyone, I need you to go to the store, buy a cheap notebook. Every film that I recommend in this segment that you have not yet seen or don't own, write it down in the notebook. Now the front cover of this notebook, I want you to write these four simple words. Just fucking buy it, why wouldn't you? Just fucking buy it! Just oh. effing buy it! Just fucking buy it! Just fucking buy it. I mean, why wouldn't you buy it? Is this not a face you can trust? Just fucking buy it. Okay. Just fucking buy it! <laughs> Just fucking buy it. Alright guys, we are here for a uh, recommendation of a film from what year is this? 07. 08. 08. 08. We'll 08. call it 08. Um, a film that I honestly don't hear too much about. But um, first let's say what we're drinking. I'm drinking Stone IPA, India Pale Ale. Really cool. It's got the devil on there. Uh, what are you drinking? 26? The uh, Shipyard Bluefin Stout. And I got the Monty Python Holy Grail. That is beer. Which is fucking <laughs> awesome. First time uh, you've had it, right? Yes, yeah, first time I've had it. It was so. really good. And it only adds that it's Monty Python. Uh, Monty awesome. Python beer, for you, those of you who don't know. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. To this film we're about to recommend. This is 2008 by Jamie Blanks. Jamie Blanks. Storm Warning. Storm Warning. Definitely a, a, a great horror film that I don't really hear too many people talk about. I don't about. see that around a lot either or nothing like that. It's not really Unfortunately, around. his other film was Urban Legend. Yeah. But uh, we all make mistakes, <laughs> right? Um, you learn from your mistakes. We actually just then. watched 
we've all seen this, but we just watched it to refresh, to refresh our minds, yeah. and uh, I just love it. Um, basically, story is, you know, I don't want to talk about plot a lot, but a couple goes on a fishing, nice little romantic fishing trip. They get lost in Australia. Um, they end up on kind of this little island, and they go for help, and they, of course, end up with this crazy backwoods uh, Australian Aussie psycho family, psycho family. <laughs> just three guys, guy's house, and from there, chaos ensues. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for, I guess touch on good cast. I mean the the three, the brothers, the brothers, the, the two brother brothers, and father, the father, brothers and the father, yeah. over the top on purpose, <laughs> but really good. The one dude was great. Yeah. One dude was hilarious. The main, the main, main, guy, the yeah. main brother, yeah. like Volvo. <laughs> he says, <laughs> "Yeah, great, yeah, great He's, job by the, the the psycho hillbillies." Everyone, not, definitely not a <laughs> no, not an original. Can you call plot. them hillbillies if they're no, like, well, kind of yeah. Aussie. I mean, they're in a, yeah. in a way they're 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 tape. definitely hillbilly types. Yeah, yeah. it's a derivative on the the whole southern, I guess, southern hick type, you know, with the. The bad teeth and the right. dirty yeah. house and all that stuff. Basically, they're, bad, yeah. they're also unkept. They're also <laughs> growing weed in their garage, which is like massive amounts of weed. Supposed to be taboo. Like oh, <laughs> these guys are bad. Yeah. I always found that funny. You know, it's like they could have come up with something a little more crazy, but they're growing weed in like their a sweatshop or something. Yeah, exactly. I mean, who hasn't grown weed in their garage? I mean, we've all done that. That's a phase. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. But uh. So the cat and then the lead, we joke about this when uh, 26 and I rented this film. Remember renting? <laughs> uh, back in the f episode one of Horse Ball, I called for it the rental you, place because I forgot the right. video store. For those of you so, in America, Blockbuster. Yeah, Blockbuster, <laughs> um, if we're allowed to say that or not. Hollywood because they're, video, they're uh, now uh, they're they bankrupt, still, so they, I don't know if we're allowed to say Blockbuster anymore. But they exist still. Blankbuster. <laughs> anyway, I like how it was cool to actually run a movie. I know some of you like you're all on VOD, video right. on demand, and downloading. I thought Netflix it was clicks. And... Friday night, twenty six and I would go to B Buster and we'd pick out something, <laughs> a cover that looked like old, you know, totally old school, like in the VHS days. And we, anyway, there was a summer that we were on a real roll, and Storm Warning was one of the films we right. chose, and we were pleasantly surprised, and. Um, the, the lead actor, the husband of... Are they married? Yeah, they're married, yeah, right? Yeah, they're married. The husband of the, the chick, he... We call him Jeff Farrell. Because <laughs> he looks <laughs> like... Will Hoff. Will Farrell. From, from the right angle, from a right-on angle. Yeah, he looks a lot like... He looks like Will Farrell. As <laughs> yeah, it looks like a mix, mix between Hasselhoff and right. Farrell. Because when they're fishing, they're actually in tight, wet, wet, wet suits. Wet suit. So that's where the Hasselhoff is... <laughs> But um, he comes he about in the facially, he looks a lot yeah. like Will Ferrell, so that's fucking cool. <laughs> and his his wife is quite attractive. Smoking hot. We should get right Shelly in for this. You want to like call her? Uh, Why not? I mean, it's like Shelly. Yeah, hey, we'll continue Shelley. talking while he gets home. She's super hot. She's French. She's supposed to be a French wife, right? Um, she's curvy, which we like. We like curvy chicks. So. There's a point. In just come here. Just tell <laughs> tell them why you tell think. Them nice folks. Very rarely do you support a chick. So tell them why you like the chicken storm wine. Oh, because she's a badass bitch. Badass like, bitch. Let's explain like, why. You she pretty much saves the damsel in distress, which is her husband. The dude. The dude so, is a damsel in distress right. this time. So I totally agree and support that. Why do you think she, though, is cool? He said her Because body. she's not like this perfect American beauty where she's like blonde and perfect nose and big blue she eyes has a big and all nose. that shit. Right, she has a big nose, she's brunette, she doesn't weigh 100 pounds. She's curvy. She's not covered in she's makeup. She's curvy, right. And yeah. No she's, makeup. Like there's rain in all the scenes that she's in and, and yeah. she's... Her makeup isn't yeah. completely, you know, <laughs> right. Like, she's a natural, natural beauty. beauty. She's a natural out. beauty. <laughs> she and, kicks ass. Right, and she she kicks ass. Right. Awesome. Thank so, you. We wanted yeah. a female Thanks for the insight. Thank I'm you. all this about that. Storm warning. Yeah. I'm all about that. Thumbs up. 
Fuck blonde skinny bitches. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Didn't you really need to go that far, but thank you. <laughs> Thanks. To all you blonde fucking skinny bitches. Well, I apologize. Watching, we totally that was support you, for. and we appreciate you blonde skinny bitches watching us right now. But anyway, you get what she was saying. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So that what really makes this film unique, I think, is what she meant, so eloquently mentioned. Um, basically, Jeff Farrell, right. Will Farrell's younger brother, maybe older brother, is probably older. Yeah, he's older. <laughs> he basically gets fucked up. He gets his leg broken, and basically, it's up passes out. It's like, up to the wife. He's pretty she much basically useless. becomes a. <laughs> Richard Dean Anderson on crack. Right. Slash MacGyver. That's MacGyver. <laughs> um, it is, as you referred to it once, it is kind of the Home Alone slash MacGyver of horror. <laughs> she <laughs> takes she takes over control, creates contraptions, which are really cool. They, there's basically three main kills in this film. They're all really good and original. Right. They're almost like old school slasher great, kills. Yeah, great effects. Great eff the effects oh, in yeah. this film is fantastic. Yeah. As far as gore, Not practical, fantastic gore in this film. Like that's another reason why I'm surprised I don't hear anyone talk about Stormwind. Great gore, very underappreciated. That scene, that scene with obviously. The There's like Hulk's fishing reel like, hook scene. It's very to me like Clyde Barker-ish. Um, and then when yeah, she beats his head in, oh, looks good. fantastic. You oh, see the was, eyeball. That was awesome. So great gore. Um, there's a we'll just say the bottle scene. <laughs> Man. We'll just say sex and so please. You can get this film really cheap. Right. I can only imagine you go on Amazon and uh, at least it's at most five dollars seven. Yeah, seven dollars. Seven dollars. Storm warning. Really unique film. I shouldn't say unique film, but unique kills. It's one cool the, to see the chick really take command. One of the uh, Dimension Extremes. That's actually really good. At one point, they were they, really yeah, good. They, they were on a roll. They they put out the American distribution of Inside. They put out, um, what else did they do? They did several pretty good ones. Um, uh, Black Sheep. Feast. Feast. Feast movies. Black Sheep, they put out. And um, a few other ones, And but recently, yeah, I mean, they're pretty much a defunct yeah. label right now. I think um, Primal, was Primal one? Primal, Primal was, was one of theirs. Welcome to the Jungle, was that? Yeah, one? Welcome to the Jungle, which was <laughs> pretty awful. was <laughs> one of theirs. There was some other, yeah, they had a, a string in 07, 08, 09 that was pretty good. They they at least helped release some good films to America. Right. And this is definitely one I think kind of slipped under the radar. It was kind of, anytime you can rent something and you get pleasantly surprised. It's a cool cover. There was a cool yeah. Region 2 cover of this. But yeah, the, the chick is super hot and she just like she's an awesome take control, independent chick who just, the kills are very unique, great characters, the gore is fantastic. Um, you can see Jeff Farrell. For the record, he's really not related to Will Farrell. We just call him that. Um, and as Ms. Hebbinger said, um, you know, even she likes her. She's, uh, yeah. we think she's really hot, but, um, She's not a skinny blonde bitch. There were lots of cool uh, scenes as well, like in the beginning with the yeah. talk about with the um, when they're on the boat and they're just kind of floating along and shit. And there's lots nice of just really cool, uh, you know. Um, one of the scenes that I liked a lot actually was when you guys mentioned when the father comes down the stairs. It is kind of like these two psychotic brothers who are so afraid of their father. <laughs> yeah. It's like you have to think, what is this father like that they're so afraid they of? They want his respect, too. Right. Like they're, and then yeah. I just see him hanging out later, uh, you know, watching their you know, little films. It's another good scene, yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> kind of awkward, I guess. There's, there's bestiality porn in this film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bestiality porn, you know. Not, I shouldn't not, say that. Yeah, you can't not see graphic, it. They're, <laughs> they're watching a B. Sally, B. Sally film. Together, not actually, a family. Yeah, there's not actually... Yeah, the <laughs> son is actually... Dead. rubbing himself. While <laughs> one watch. son is rubbing himself <laughs> while his father holds him. Yeah, it's not as fucked up as it sounds. Lovingly holding each like, other and... Yeah, it's, it's not as graphic as it sounds, but it's still it's just, fucked up. It's just rather awkward. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a good nugget, a good morsel from... 2008 by Jamie Blanks, um, a must in your collection. I think this is a segment that I call now just fucking buy it. <laughs> I used to call it. I used to call it the the pick of the month. It's no longer. It's just fucking buy it. Yeah. And it's don't enough. don't it's download it. Don't hope. Don't see it on it, Netflix. Right. Don't it's, fucking Metallica it.